This video is about constructive plate margins. We are going to answer the four following questions. What plate movement occurs at a constructive plate boundary? What tectonic processes and tectonic activity happens at a constructive plate boundary? What landforms occur at a constructive plate boundary? And what does a diagram of a constructive plate boundary look like? So we'll start with the plate movement that occurs at a constructive plate boundary. As shown by the diagram, you have two oceanic plates or two continental plates that move apart from each other, as shown by the arrows here. Sometimes we call that diverging. This then forms a gap in the middle between the two plates and it reduces the pressure on the mantle below. So this magma starts to melt and then it rises up through this gap. Once on the surface, this magma becomes lava, the name changes, and it's a runny lava, so it starts to flow, and it can flow quite far before it solidifies. And over time that keeps repeating, with the lava coming up, building up these layers, and it can make a volcano. The tectonic processes an activity that happen at a constructive plate boundary is what we will focus on next. So first of all, tectonic processes are mantle melting. So as the two plates move apart, the pressure on the mantle below is reduced. This causes the mantle to melt, making the magma in the mantle more liquid. It then rises to the surface through the cracks, that gap that's been formed, between the two plates moving apart and it forms a volcano. In regards to tectonic activity, at this plate margin, volcanic eruptions happen. Because the magma is runny and hot and cools at a temperature of about 1200 degrees centigrade, the magma rises from the mantle to fill the gap between the two plates as they move apart and we get shield volcanoes forming over time. The other tectonic activity that happens at the plate margin are earthquakes. As the two tectonic plates move apart, it's not a smooth movement, so small minor earthquakes occur. The two landforms that occur at a constructive plate boundary are shield volcanoes and mid-oceanic ridges. A shield volcano, as you can see from the diagram here, has layers of runny lava with very little ash. It has a low rounded peak. It's not very high and it's like a shield, hence the name shield. It has a very wide base with the sides being very gentle. This is all because of the magma and the magma is runny and has a temperature of 1,200 degrees centigrade. So when it erupts, or the lava erupts, it can travel a long way before it cools. Hence, it spreads out. Also, constructive plate margin volcanoes are frequently erupting, so they don't have lots of gas building up, they're frequent. This means they are not explosive, they're not violent eruptions. Mid-oceanic ridges, as you can see on the picture here of Iceland, okay, are where the plates have moved apart and they leave this steep face. This is actually a picture from the Iceland trip from this year. Okay, so mid-oceanic ridges and shield volcanoes are what form at constructed plate land boundaries as landforms. Here we have four diagrams to summarise what is happening in a constructive plate margin. So diagram one, as shown earlier, nice and simple. We have got two plates with the arrows showing what direction the plate's moving. We've got a gap going up the middle where the magma rises. And then on the surface, as that magma cools, it becomes lava, making a volcano. Our example is Eurasian plate, 
and the North American plate moving apart from each other, and that forms a volcano of Iceland, which is found along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. The diagram here, number two, okay, you can see is a slightly different version. We've got the side view down here with our volcano in the middle, and then we've also got it extended so that we have got the top view point of it. And you can see that we've got our magma rising as our vent, and this has happened along this mid-oceanic ridge, so we have also got some other volcanic islands drawn on. Again, you've got the plate movement being shown by the arrows going away this way. Um, and then what we've also got, which is good to include in any diagram, are convection currents being labelled on, and these occur in the mantle. Our third diagram, again, trying to give a viewpoint of both the side and the top down. Okay, so you've got the rising magma, you've got the plates being named, you've got the arrows pulling apart, we've got the ridge being named, and we have a volcanic Iceland labelled, and we've identified that this is Iceland. So just giving that case study depth to it. The fourth diagram has come from the CPG book. Okay, and you can see that we've got the magma rising, shown by the arrow. We've got the two plates pulling apart. And then you can see that we've got this rift drawn going along by this kind of steep face. So four diagrams to show you how a constructive plate margin is formed and what landforms are occurring at it. So we get earthquakes as tectonic activity as the plates move apart. And we get volcanic islands and mid-oceanic ridges as our landforms. Make sure that you're able to draw a diagram of a constructive plate margin from memory, labelling on the key features of the mantle, the rising magma, convection currents, the plate movement, example plates, the volcanic islands and the mid-oceanic ridges. This is a question taken from the AQA GCSE exam paper. Here you can see that you are provided with three diagrams. Number one number two, number three. You were also told in the question phrasing that it is a constructive plate boundary and your task is to then write a sentence to support each diagram. You can see on this side here that I have given you some suggestions that would get you credit in the exam. Each diagram needs one sentence and so there are three marks overall for the pictures. So study the pictures carefully and you can really work out what you need to say. So for example, number one, you can see that you have got two plates, as shown by this area here, marking the spread between them. These arrows are representing convection currents and you've got the mantle labelled on. So from that, you can work out that the plates are moving apart or that convection currents are moving them or one is moving west, one is moving the opposite direction. In diagram two, you can see that a gap has opened up between the two plates. So the plates must have moved apart, making a gap. That gap is then plugged or the arrow shows that magma is rising. Make sure it's magma, not lava. Remember, lava is only on the surface, magma is inside the earth. In diagram three, spotting the difference between two and three, you can see that we have got layers of lava that have built up and they've made this shield volcano, this nice rounded, low, flat peaked volcano. So for our statement that we put, we've got continued movement would get a mark because we can see that the gap has actually got larger. Rising magma leads to new layers of magma, so our arrow is still going up. Magma has cooled down, the volcano has formed or the volcano has got bigger. So when you get a question like this, just look very carefully at the diagrams and work out what you could say about the diagram and you'll be able to get credit for it. For it. That completes this presentation on constructive plate boundaries and you should have all the knowledge you need to define what the plate movement is, what tectonic activity and processes happen, what landforms occur there and to be able to draw a diagram with fully labelled and annotated if needs be in the question. Okay, good luck with revising.